go. Uh, I'd love it if I got it totally wrong. Yeah, uh, right. Look, I hope you do, because it makes for better content for me personally. Yeah. Welcome back. Another episode of Comedians in Bars Getting Blind. Tasting notes because we don't support uh, people getting blind drunk. Um, this week I'm joined by Luke Benson, stand-up comedian extraordinaire. They go to June this year, like a lot of you models. I was only six foot one. Right, then I bought these tablets off the internet that said grow six inches in three weeks and that plan backfired. <laughs> All the way from the Edinburgh Festival. You're doing best of the Edinburgh Fest here at Fringe yeah. this year, aren't you? Yeah, that's where I live outside of uh, Adelaide, and uh, I live at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. There's the, the two Fringe Festivals that you bounce back and forth. But I'm in a time loop, so <laughs> I only really get two months of the year, and then I'm in like some sort of cryo, like a time bubble outside of that, and they bring me out. That's honestly what it kind of feels like in Adelaide, except the two time bubbles are like, it's fun when Fringe is on, and then it's just Adelaide the like rest of the time. Like a bigger bubble. Yeah, we were, yeah, just, ta we were yeah. just talking about it out there in the sense Mad that- Adelaide, Sadelaide. Radelaide. Undeadelaide. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of different, there's a lot of different Adelaides yeah, going yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, right. But what we're here to do today, mate, yes, is sir. to try and crown you as the king of Chardonnay blind tasting. So what yes. we've got is we've got three different bottles of white wine. They're all Chardonnays, I'll give you that as the hint. One of them's worth 150 bucks. One of them's worth five bucks, and one of them in the middle is around that $40 mark. You know, you're going on a date, you can't really afford to splash out, but you don't want to buy the cheapest bottle of wine on the list sort of thing. Yes. Your mission today is to identify which is which through your excellent palate, your nose, all, all of the visual senses. You can touch it if you want to, just keep it in your own glass, not in mine, because obviously we're being COVID safe in these unprecedented times. But yeah. Which one would you like to start with? We've got the jug, we've got the French press, and we've got the little uh, antique one that I definitely didn't get from an op shop. Well, that's beautiful, the antique one, isn't it? Yeah, it is quite nice. Um, like it used to hold cyanide and something. Can we just work for my left, like left to right? We'll do the, what's that, like an old Cooper's tank? Uh, a bit of a, yeah, I think that this is actually vintage, established 1947. I got it from Kmart, so it's very impressive that they- They've been uh, around for ages. They have been around for ages. Glassware. They have been. Now, what do you know about wine, Luke? Um, you get like, you've got your reds and your whites and your roses that aren't a hybrid of the two. Yep. Grapes, mouthfeel, soil, altitude, climate, have a bearing. Like, um, you know, like war criminals, some of the best ones come out of Europe. <laughs> yeah, I think you're almost overqualified to be on the show based yeah. on some of the people that we've had on already. Right. What about Chardonnay in particular? Have you had any Chardonnays before? Sorry, I jumped right in. No, you're um, fine, you're fine. That's what they're here for. It's my second favourite thing with hard on in it. Um, <laughs> I've thought of that sat here. I hope that's okay. That's, yeah. that's cracker. That's, that's really nice. good. It's like a late dinner wine, isn't it? Light dinner wine, let's it's see. It's not going to take your head off. So typically with Chardonnay, you're going to have like uh, it, it's sort of like a structural oh, white wine. You've got like buttery, you've got woody, you've got a bit of oak in there most of the time. I'm a mass so on the channel, I'm a massive fiend for assuming every white wine is Chardonnay because it's one of the ones that I actually know the name of varietally. Right. Um, but this does smell a lot like Chardonnay. Would you ever recommend put an additional butter in your wine? Like if you're doing sort of bulletproof wine and if you're really if you're really steering into the butteriness of a Chardonnay, you just yeah. lop a knob off and <laughs> chuck that in there as trying well. Trying to get your calories. Um, <laughs> if you're on a bulking diet potentially, yeah. but as you know, you and I being massive gym rats that we are, we understand the uh, culture of that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, where you get the the buttery hints? There's buttery hints yeah. in there. It, it, it could do with a little extra knob, in my opinion. Oh, you into it? No, that, that's beautiful. I just feel like such a high level innuendo like that when you want to, it could like, that's what she said, when you uh, went, could do with an extra knob in it. Could always do with I an extra like knob in it. I felt like it warranted. Oh, um, and ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah, goodness. Recording, trying not to overwhelm the palate. Yep. So I'm sensitive because I'm serious about the assignment that isn't that serious, but. This is extremely serious. This will be going on your record. Like, it'll be, the, when you're doing your next shows, like, you know how comedians always have five stars, witty, engaging, down to earth. 
If you don't get this right, it's going to be one stars. Doesn't know he's yeah. cheap from expensive Chardonnays. We can't have that. Down to earth tones. Down to earth tones, exactly. The, um, the thing for me really with comics doing this is a lot of them have award winners on their artwork. Mm. You don't have to say what the award is. Like if they come away with that magnificent, your crown. Yeah. It's straight, straight on the biog. That could be, that could be award winning stuff right there. Uh, I do seem to think, uh, there are a lot of fringe posters around Adelaide with a lot of awards on them. There's a lot of awards. There I mean, are fundamentally awards. there's a lot of awards. Yeah. yeah. We are a participation it's culture a, society these days. Comedy is meritocratic. Yes, I've got an arts degree but I didn't pay that much attention so you're going to need to explain meritocratic to the listeners. Obviously I understand. Yeah, so uh, you're, you're like a wonder right? so just win stuff. People want to win stuff as like a way to like not have to gamble. Then like you go do a competition, we'll recognise you as good. Yeah. When like a small judging panel has recognised you as good. And yep. that way they've done the heavy lifting of filtering out. There's also quite a lot of shit. So like yeah. well reviewed. It's, yeah. it's peer reviewed journals essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Um, out of the glass. Is that feeling 150-ish? Is that feeling 5-ish? Is that feeling 40-ish? I would say that that is drinkable. I would be loath to call it 5-ish. Somewhere either 40 or 150, but let's see. I've not really drank this festival, so my uh, sensitivity to wine and awareness of it, is, it will grow over our time together. We've caught you fresh. Yeah. We've caught you fresh. You're supposed to keep wine in uh, French presses, is that right? Yes, yeah, so yeah. what I found, what, multiple, see you're the first person to recognise the multiple uses of the French press on the show, so already hats off to you. Yeah. Um, these all look the same colour to me, so I don't even know if it's worth talking about the colour. Are you picking up any differences in there? Yeah, Okay. I, I would say that the one on the French press yes. had a Baroque a day ago, so it's still coming out of the system, Okay. but there's a slightly more yellowy orange hue to middle one. That might be where I am in relation to the bar top. Could be the Just case. Through. Light is tricky, isn't it? We're at different angles, because you're, what, like 6'5"? I'm a huge man. And, uh, and everyone, knows, everyone knows I'm 8'5". Yep. Uh, um, put that on my tombstone. 6'5", Henry Doyle, next yeah, to 8'5", Luke yeah. Benson. Yeah, I would say that one. That one's like hydrated. Probably needs to chill out on the water. That one on the right, healthy. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Let's go in the middle. French pressed it. It's double. It, this is double filtered, so it's like a very cheap vodka, essentially. Uh, would, the, would the press have like any impact on um, the re, aeration, re, refiltering and aeration, refiltering out perhaps any uh, sediment? So if you cork a wine, could you French press it? Would that save the wine? Okay, so if you cork a wine, you could French press it, but it would still taste. Terrible, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it would fix. Uh, then again, I don't know that to be true. Right. So there's a chance you're onto something, but at what, the same time, I can't cool. confirm or deny. Yeah. That smells an, like Chardonnay. I got an aero press dumped doing a brag. Oh. Maybe that could save it because that's like the few filler papers. That's something we could do. We could experiment with different coffee making procedures and what it does to the state of wine. Surely cold drip wine would be good. That tastes like Chardonnay of, uh, of my youth. The yeah, Chardonnay's. Like Chardonnay's that I, uh, yeah, that, 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 that you is like what I would associate with. Go up bar. Your options really in the UK generally are like Pinot Grigio, Chardonnay, perhaps a Semillon. Yeah, that would be. That would be. Fits awesome. right in the Chardonnay yeah. slot for you. I should. I bought these wines, so I should be able to tell you more about. Like, I should be able to figure out what's the expensive and what's the cheap, but like, do, does anything jump out at you about those two being different? Because they taste incredibly similar to me. There's like a nostalgia alarm bell that's going off for that one. Mm -hmm. Which in that I probably had a bit too much of it. So, I'm sort of leaning more fibres on that one. Maybe cheaper because you've had more of it. Because that one's like, imagine it didn't like, you, my body didn't go, is it okay to curse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My body didn't go, whoa there, fucking chill out. <laughs> For a when second I, I thought, whoa there was the swear yeah, you were yeah. worried about, and I'm like, um, we're not that conservative. Homie is Ned Flanders. He's TV, Goodness me. He's TV ready. <laughs> yeah, there was no, none of that. I feel like you could lose an afternoon very kindly with that one. Yep. So 
to, yeah. So that's the early five five uh, nominee. I do love the idea of kindly losing an afternoon. That is such a lovely way of saying you just get absolutely sat, sat about, yeah, blamed to, yeah. Your, uh, to your thing. Yeah, yeah. So that that's um, that's the early diagnosis there. Yeah, that's that's slightly harder. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, look, it's not as it's not as soft here. The butter, the butter makes a difference in it. Could do with a few more knobs. Yeah, absolutely. And you've always said that. You have always said that. Um, shall we move on to the oh, antique really? water jug? Yeah. So when you're you're like Wayne Wayne man. Me, yeah. wine man. Okay, yeah. yeah when yeah. I'm wine man, you, yeah. You, you like work around wine, don't you? I do work around wine. Because when in the UK. Anyone was referred to as like a wine man or wine person, that would mean bobo. But you're like, a, you've got a job on that for a vineyard. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, or a vinter, is that what they're called? A vinter? Yeah, so we've got our like winemakers, we've got cellar hands. Uh, so cellar hands basically like scrub the tanks. Is that and a good, like good name for like a horror movie? Edward Cellar Hands. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. It's just hammered. Um, <laughs> Keeps cutting himself because he's got, he's got more, no more skills. Yeah, he's got <laughs> just corking everything. Um, so mouthfeel. What are like? What's the scale of that? Oh, like, mouthfeel. Do you, just, do you just go? Oh yeah, that's got good mouthfeel. I think oh, that. Oh, so like the three that we've had so far. I think that this is probably talking about mouthfeel, the thinnest mouthfeel in the sense that it's quite lean on the palate. Would yeah. be what I would say. In the sense that. So when I'm talking, when I've. My understanding of what mouthfeel is, is if you have a glass of water, that's very thin. If you have a glass of milk, that's got quite like a, you know, the textural feel of milk in the mouth. I don't know if you're lactose intolerant. I don't know if I'm excluding no, no, you from the no, Fantastic. No, milk positive, yeah. Milk positive, I'm glad. Um, so I think that this is more on the water side of things than milk. Yeah. Which yeah. is something that winemakers love you saying about their drops. So congrats this winemaker. What's more expensive, water or milk? It really depends because if you're getting like Voss water, pretty expensive. If you're going like, the, but same thing goes for unhomogenized, very bougie milk coming from virgin cows from single origin sources. I reckon there's this Mad Max reality that we're hurtling towards water or rapidly supersede milk. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. Like it's going to be, people are complaining about the prices of petrol at the moment. I reckon that's going to be water, not too far up, down the line. Yeah. This oh. being thinner, does right. it make it cheaper or more expensive? Five dollars. Five dollars? Yeah. So yeah, we'll yeah. go, we'll go cheapest. Yeah. So this is, this is the order you'd like to stick with? Yeah. And if, you know, I'm sorry to the people who'd wager on it if I let them down. Oh, there's big marketing going on here. There's big marketing going on. So we are obviously playing for the opportunity to crown you the king of Chardonnay tastings today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you want to go? Do you want to reveal from the expensive to the cheap or from the cheap to the expensive? Cheap to expensive. All right, Lockie, what have we got in the French press? Have we got a cheap bottle or have we got an expensive bottle? Cheap boy down here, what have we got? This is not the cheap boy. This is the $40 bottle. So this is... There you go. Uh, I'd love it if I got it totally wrong. Yeah, uh, right. Look, I hope you do dollars. because it makes for better content for me personally. <laughs> yeah. The uh, large Chardonnay, I'm going to just <laughs> have a little knock. What I'm going to do right now is remove the crown because you don't deserve that, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm sorry, Luke. And you're not going to be able to have award winning <laughs> award winning wine taste right now. I don't lose all, yeah, wine taste. I don't lose all my other merits. In my opinion, there's no reason for me to say this because like, I could just be wrong and me being wrong on camera doesn't benefit anyone except the audience. Think that this is going to be the cheapest one, the thinner one, and I think yeah. that you were right that this is the most expensive. But we'll see. Lockie, in the antique water pourer, what have we got? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is $4 a bottle. Very drinkable though. Yeah. Well done, Riverside London. Legends. We had you before in our red wine episode and you really punched above your weight there as well. So Riverside Landing, doing great things for the value for money. And that means, of course, that Seems like the, the big bougie bottle at the top end here. This is $150 a bottle. It's your French Chardonnay. It's written in ways that I can't possibly... Do you wanna, you, you're from well, yeah. Europe. You're from Europe. I'm, I'm Read from that Europe. out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Premier 2019, Bonheur. Uh, Mousson Le Grand Charon uh, Appellation Mousson Contoureur I butchered that last one Pascal Puyer Bonheur Mousson France <laughs> Look, you've done very well in the sense you've identified the expensive one 
I think that this is a bit of an outlier in the sense that these two are quite similar in terms of the texture and you've yeah, just yeah. you've taken a bit of a gamble there going maybe thin is expensive because as we were saying water's going to be a booming market coming up in 2025 that, that, that and the old nostalgia things but yeah Riverside Landing seems like a good sort of recounting of a short battle yeah, you know I see that like there was the Riverside Landing let like, me tell you the day Thank you so much for joining us. Have you got anything coming up that you'd like to plug? Yeah, I'm doing best of the Edinburgh Fest in Melbourne, and um, it's going to be great. And please come to see me or follow me on Instagram at Massive Benson. Okay. He's a good follow on Instagram, trust me. I've been there for a week and a half, and I'm having a wonderful time. Luke, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, we'll see you in Melbourne sometime. Until then, cheers.